The Australia Vietnam Policy Institute is the first institute in Australia dedicated to promoting and growing the strategic and economic relationship with Vietnam. The AVPI was established in 2021 by four founding partners and is supported by funding from the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade under the Australia Vietnam Enhanced Economic Engagement Grant Program. The AVPI also brings together a growing community of knowledge partners with a shared passion for bilateral engagement. Australia and Vietnam share a strong and ambitious strategic partnership and an interest in an open, inclusive and prosperous Indo-Pacific. The AVPI aims to champion the Australia-Vietnam strategic and economic bilateral relationship and to cultivate opportunities for increased two-way engagement and collaboration, supporting businesses to leverage the bilateral opportunity in key industry sectors. The AVPI brings together state government, education and research providers, industry and not-for-profits, and provides a vibrant platform for bilateral engagement, knowledge exchange and policy discussion around key sectors as identified in the Enhanced Economic Engagement Strategy. Through a community of passionate knowledge partners, the AVPI is building an ecosystem which over time can help strengthen the bilateral relationship between Australia and Vietnam by sharing knowledge and encouraging open discussions and collaborations between the two countries. Organisations can approach the AVPI to receive the latest market insights and join a consortium of partners who are enthusiastic about growing the bilateral relationship between Australia and Vietnam. To get involved and stay up to date, visit the AVPI website at avpi.org.au and sign up to the AVPI newsletter. Policy Institute dedicated towards Vietnam in Australia. What an exciting and special moment in the Australia and Vietnam relationship. My name's Diane Fan. I'll be your host for today's launch event. And I'm very excited to hear from distinguished speakers not only share insights about the Australia-Vietnam relationship, but also share more, of course, about the Policy Institute. As a proud Vietnamese Australian, entrepreneur, an international marketer who is focused on building human connections across cross-cultural boundaries. I'm particularly excited to hear from today's speakers and also see important information about this relationship continue to grow in accessibility to people all over the world. I'm also an alum of the 2021 Australia-Vietnam Leadership Dialogue, which is an intensive program for young leaders across both countries who are passionate about growing the bilateral relationship through people-to-people -people links through a very diverse range of industries. I'm proud to represent the AVLD today, along with the other founding partners of the Australia-Vietnam Policy Institute, including RMIT University, Asia Society Australia, and AsiaLink. Today is a virtual event with hundreds of people joining from all over the world. I'm joining here from the centre of Melbourne at RMIT University and I'm very grateful to be here on this land today. Hence, I would like to begin today's proceedings by acknowledging the peoples of the Woi Wurrung and the Bun Wurrung language groups from the Eastern Kulin Nation, on whose unceded lands we stand on today and we conduct the business of the AVPI. I would also like to acknowledge the lands, the traditional owners of the lands from all of the areas where our speakers virtually and our audience virtually are attending and acknowledge their ancestors and elders past and present. I'm very grateful to be here on this land today, to be able to work on this land today. Thank you. There are also some people here in the audience that I would like to acknowledge. I'm joined here today by the Honourable Dan Tian, Minister for Trade, Tourism and Investment, as well as AVPI founding partner representatives, Professor Alec Cameron, RMIT University's Vice Chancellor as well as President, Philip Ivanov, Asia Society Australia's CEO, and Lee Howard, Asia, Asia Link CEO. It's great to have you all on board. Welcome and thanks for joining. Today's event will run for about 60 minutes in two portions. So we'll firstly have introductory remarks, introducing the Institute, and then second of all, we'll open up to a panel discussion where we will hear more about the Australia-Vietnam Enhanced Economic Engagement Strategy, crucial for both countries in this post-COVID recovery period of time.
Um, in case you do need to leave early, please know that the whole event is being recorded, available on the AVPI website next week. Now to kick off opening remarks, I am very pleased to be able to shortly share with you a video message from Her Excellency, Ms. Robin Moody, Australia's ambassador to Vietnam. Ambassador Moody has been Australia's ambassador to Vietnam since 2019 and led the diplomatic relationship from strength to strength, including through the COVID-19 pandemic. Ambassador Moody brings deep diplomatic experience to the role, as well as a long connection to the country as this is her second assignment in Vietnam. Ambassador Moody's personal love for Vietnam and her fluent Vietnamese is helping to take our relationship to new heights. I also note that from the official embassy video for Thuc, that she shares an affinity for Vietnamese dance, not unlike my mother. Ambassador Moody has been such a strong supporter of the Australia Vietnam Policy Institute and is currently watching our virtual feed from RMIT's Saigon South campus. Welcome Ambassador Moody and over to your video message. Good afternoon and greetings from Vietnam. I'm very pleased to participate today in the launch of the Australia Vietnam Policy Institute, which I joined from RMIT's campus in Ho Chi Minh City. To help set the scene for the Institute's launch and excellent program of events to follow, I'll share some thoughts on the strong bilateral relationship that has been built over the last five decades since diplomatic relations between Australia and Vietnam were established in 1973. Personally and professionally, I have a long association with Vietnam. I was posted here from 1993 to 1995 on my first overseas assignment. At that time, 20 years after the establishment of diplomatic relations, and just as the US embargo was being lifted, the partnership between Vietnam and Australia was already well established. The opening up of Vietnam's economy under the Doi Moi reforms had only commenced a few years earlier. And during my posting, I saw firsthand the transformational impact that this market reform strategy was having on the country. The change from a purely socialist, centrally planned economic approach to a market-oriented economy was happening literally before our eyes as the Vietnamese leadership and population seized the opportunities provided by this new openness and applied their trademark determination and tenacity to the challenge of economic development. Both the Australian and Vietnamese governments had a strong commitment to cooperation and political dialogue and both were focused on the great potential to build the relationship to its full potential in the future. It's been a great privilege to return to Vietnam as ambassador over a quarter of a century later and to see how far Vietnam has developed and how much of this great potential in our relationship has been realised. Today, as we approach the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations in 2023, the bilateral political and economic relationship between Australia and Vietnam is characterised by its longevity and depth, its consistency of commitment and the shared ambition of both countries to develop our strategic partnership even further. It's also characterised by the formal political and economic architecture we have built together. This includes our strategic partnership agreement three free trade agreements and a mutual commitment to regional and global rulemaking and institutions across the security, economic and development fields. To further strengthen ties and practically build on our existing economic architecture, at the end of last year, Australia and Vietnam joined together to release the bilateral Enhanced Economic Engagement Strategy. The strategy, endorsed at prime ministerial level, has the goals of doubling two-way investment and becoming top 10 trading partners. By helping to level up the economic relationship, the strategy will be instrumental in elevating the broader strategic partnership. The strategy is also exceptional as being jointly authored with Vietnam, which in itself is testament to the strength and trust that exists between our countries. The Australia-Vietnam Policy Institute being launched today received grant funding under the strategy's Australia-Vietnam Economic Grant Program. As the first policy institute focused on the Australia-Vietnam relationship, the AVPI will play an important role in strengthening the bilateral relationship through research and strategic dialogue. Its establishment will also support the goals to further mature the relationship and elevate it to the next level. The role of the AVPI will be critical in increasing knowledge and awareness about the Australia-Vietnam relationship, and it will help to bring a depth of understanding, creativity and innovation to the equation. 
Your role as policymakers, thought leaders and business representatives will be invaluable. And the AVPI will help to harness and direct your expertise and experience to the benefit of our strategic partnership. I wish the Australia-Vietnam Policy Institute all success in furthering economic and strategic ties between our two countries and in strengthening our relationship across all sectors. I very much look forward to working with the Institute here in Ho Chi Minh City and through the Embassy in Hanoi. Thank you. Getting remarks and setting the scene for us here today. Now I am delighted to share a video message from His Excellency Mr Wing Tat Tan, Vietnam's Ambassador to Australia. Ambassador Tan is a career diplomat and has been with us here in Australia since 2020. Amongst his very long list of career highlights, he has most recently been Vietnam's Ambassador to Thailand. Ambassador Tan is a natural leader here amongst the diplomatic corps in Australia and has been working hard to take our relationship to new heights. His personal support for the Institute has been integral to get us here to the launch today. Ambassador Tan is joining us here today from Canberra. It is an honour to hear from you, Ambassador Tan. Well, good afternoon, distinguished guests. It is my honour to join Minister Dante Han and all of you to congratulate the launching of the Australia-Vietnam Policy Institute, API. We are now in the third year of the COVID-19 pandemic. During this most uh, challenging of times, I'm pleased that uh, Australia-Vietnam relations kept expanding and deepening. Our two way trade volumes increased 50% last year to make Australia our 10th largest trading partner. Our Prime Ministers announced the Enhanced Economic Engagement Strategy in November, and the Fed established the Vietnam and Mekong Strategy Branch in its new Southeast Asia Mainland Division at about the same time. Given Australia's support, the importance of the Mekong separation is acknowledged for the first time by the Quad Foreign Ministers' meeting uh, in Melbourne earlier this month. During Foreign Minister Marie Spain's visit to Hanoi amid the pandemic last year, we agreed to work together towards a comprehensive strategic partnership as early as next February. Last but not least, the RP is launched today as Australia's first think tank on Vietnam, bringing together leaders across research, government and industry are a shared passion for the Australia-Vietnam relationship. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the Fed, in particular Minister Thi Han, who is behind all of the above, and Ambassador Moody, our business communities, our research circles, for these outstanding achievements, which could not be imagined just 12 months ago. In this year of the Tiger, we we will implement the new economic engagement strategy, celebrate the 50th anniversary of our diplomatic relations, and draw up a roadmap toward the CSP. Therefore, our expectations of RP are high. On the one hand, I strongly endorse the objectives and programs set out by RP, and will do whatever I can in their support. On the other, I hope that in line with your targets, our people will 1. Educate our peoples about the economic and strategic importance of Australia to Vietnam and vice versa. 2. Build mutual understanding of our joint past and overcome the legacies of war, thereby correcting any remaining misperceptions of our respective political systems. And three, have our business people discover or rediscover each other's market opportunities. And the first step, I hope RP can deliver a publication on the 50 years of our mutually beneficial relationship. With the, with the upgrading of ASEAN-Australia relationship to CSP last year, I'm convinced that in the post-pandemic era, Australia will augment its resources for this vital relationship, including with the Mekong separation, 
and enhance its coordination with ASEAN in the Indo-Pacific and at the United Nations. It's also my expectations that not only the fact, but also business communities and research circles will approach Southeast Asia in both dimensions, maritime and mainland. I believe RP will help make this a reality. With this toast, I'd like to welcome the official launch of the RP. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Tan. I think that a lot of people in both Australia and Vietnam are hoping that the Year of the Tiger is very exciting for both countries. Now, our speaker for today, now our next speaker for today is Professor Alec Cameron, Vice Chancellor and President of RMIT University. Professor Cameron recently joined RMIT University, having moved back home to Australia from the UK, where he was leading Aston University in Birmingham. A Rhodes Scholar with a PhD from Oxford in Robotics, Professor Cameron brings a wealth of experience and network to RMIT. RMIT is, as of course a lot of us know, a global university with a truly Asian footprint, including through the largest Asian university campus offshore in Vietnam, where RMIT is well known by all, and of course many of my friends and colleagues in Vietnam have attended as well. Welcome, Professor Cameron. Over to you now to set the scene for the Policy Institute. Thank you for the introduction, Diane, and for recognising all our special guests in person, online and via video. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to the Minister for Trade, Tourism and Investment, the Honourable Dan Tian, MP, who is here with me on campus today. To everyone, Thank you for being part of the launch of the Australian Vietnam Policy Institute, which is Australia's first policy institute focused on our relationship with Vietnam. RMIT proudly shares this moment with our founding partners, AsiaLink at the University of Melbourne, the Asia Society Australia, and the Australia-Vietnam Leadership Dialogue. We also acknowledge the funding support uh, of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, as well as the many knowledge partners who have already joined our network. More than a launch, this is the Institute's inaugural event, and we're bringing together leaders across industry, research and government, and higher education, who share a passion for strengthening the strategic and economic links between Australia and Vietnam. So in every sense, we are beginning as the Institute will continue, and its unique strength will lie in this consortia approach. It will draw a range of partners across Australia and Vietnam from leading businesses to governments, not-for-profits and education providers to create a one-stop platform for strategic engagement, collaboration and knowledge sharing. In this way, we will bring focus to our bilateral relationship and strengthen our mutual understanding around opportunities for trade and investment to benefit the economic development and sustainable futures of both countries. Today you will hear about the ongoing strategic and economic partnership between Australia and Vietnam and the new Australia-Vietnam Enhanced Economic Engagement Strategy. And I'm looking forward to the panel of Australian-Vietnam business champions and industry leaders hosted by my predecessor and great friend of RMIT, Professor Martin Bean to explore the activation of the economic strategy between the two countries. I also encourage you to visit the Institute's website after today's event, where you'll find more information and the latest resources from the network, as well as upcoming events and ways to stay informed. Together, we will build a strong ecosystem focused on fostering greater links between our two countries, expand our network of knowledge partners and nurture opportunities for new partnerships and collaboration. And we at RMIT are particularly excited about all of this because for more than 30 years, our university has played an active role in Asia, partnering successfully with key educational in institutions, industry and government to deliver world-class education and create impact throughout the region. In Vietnam specifically, RMIT has been embedded in the local fabric for more than 20 years as Australia's largest offshore campus and the only fully foreign university in the country, contributing 
to the region's social and economic priorities. Through the Australia-Vietnam Policy Institute, we will now go one step further in building the strategic partnership between Australia and Vietnam. The commitment to relationship building was first announced by both Prime Ministers back in 2018, before these deeply complex times made partnership and collaboration more important than ever, and the Institute is testament to how far we've come. On a personal note, I'm incredibly proud to bring RMIT's scale and presence to bear in Vietnam for the mutual benefit of both countries. Using our networks and expertise to drive knowledge and research through the Institute will be another way that, together, we can generate positive and practical impact. I look forward to visiting Vietnam in the very near future to continue the conversation in person. In the meantime, please enjoy today's event. I anticipate great outcomes from the inaugural Australian Vietnam Policy Institute, and that will be thanks to everyone involved. Back to you, Diane. Thank you, Professor Cameron. It is fantastic to hear how RMIT will be lending its more than 30 years of experience in Vietnam to bring the Australia-Vietnam Policy Institute to life. Our final speaker before we open up to the panel discussion is the Honourable Dan Tian, the Minister for Trade, Tourism and Investment. Minister Tian has previously served as the Minister for Education, Minister for Veterans Affairs, Minister for Defence Personnel and other ministerial roles. Minister Tian has led the Australia-Vietnam Enhanced Economic Engagement Strategy and is a big supporter of unlocking those mutually beneficial opportunities for both countries across the key industries. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, Minister Tian visited Vietnam last year, showing just how high a priority he and Australia places on Vietnam right now. And I do know from, his last, from our last discussion together that he really did enjoy his bowl of fur while he was there. <laughs> It is an absolute pleasure to have you join us, Minister Tian. Thanks, Diane. Can I say what a pleasure it is to be with you again, and this time in person. Uh, the last time we spoke together was when I just returned from Vietnam and I had the great pleasure of joining with you and your alumni from the Australia-Vietnam leadership Youth Leadership Dialogue. And I've got to say that interaction was absolutely enthralling for me and showed that not only the strength of the relationship, but importantly, the future of the relationship. It was on display there and it was wonderful to be able to join you all and please keep up your engagement because making sure those future generations are coming forward is so, so important. Alec, uh, wonderful to be here at RMIT and thank you for hosting this Policy Institute and for your ongoing engagement in the education relationship between Australia and Vietnam. Uh, it's incredibly important for our future uh, and I know that you will cherish it and build on the wonderful foundations that your good friend and my good friend Martin Bean um, has put in place. So, so thank you for hosting us today and, and good luck uh, with your future endeavours here at RMIT. It is a, it's a great university centred right here in the heart of Melbourne and uh, I'm sure that you understand the big shoes you've got to fill but also the importance of the role uh, ahead. Can I say to Lee and, and Philip, uh, fantastic to see you both involved a, as well. It's so important that we make sure that when it comes to the region as a whole, we're putting all our resources together to make sure that we're very unified in identifying the opportunities. And so it's terrific to see both your engagement and also acknowledge Melbourne University as, as well. Can I um, say to the business champions who are with us, and we're going to hear more from them uh, in a minute, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for agreeing to be business champions. Uh, it's incredibly important that you understand also that you have key roles to play. Uh, we want to make sure we've got our youth, we want to make sure we've got those education links, but also uh, the business to business links going forward are going to be incredibly important. As a matter of fact, I think they can really provide the foundation 
to the relationship. And we've made huge inroads in that regard through uh, the enhanced economic strategy which has been launched, launched by our both Prime Ministers, which has made a huge difference because it's been recognised from the leadership at the very, very top uh, how important this relationship is going forward and especially the economic part of it. Uh, and can I also acknowledge our two ambassadors who are with us today and thank you for the roles that you're playing. And uh, to the Vietnamese ambassador here in Australia, Ambassador Tang, uh, you're absolutely right. In very important year uh, this year, the year of the tiger, and I couldn't let it pass by saying um, go Richmond and let's hope that they can really uh, capitalise on the year of the tiger this year. And I know the, um, the new Chancellor of RMIT would join with me in, in that sentiment. Can I begin by just acknowledging how important the relationship is between Australia and Vietnam and how the importance of that relationship is only going to continue to grow. The geostrategic climate in the Indo-Pacific is changing, and it's changing literally as we speak. And that means that Australia has to embark on enhancing relationships right across the region, but ensuring that we enhance key relationships. And I see the Vietnam-Australia relationship as a key relationship going forward. Uh, and there is a lot for us to continue to build on. We've done very, very important work in putting the enhanced economic engagement strategy in place, but we're also doing important work in making sure that CPTPP uh, continues to be the gold standard agreement when it comes to trade and investment in the Indo-Pacific relationship. As RCEP begins this year, there is incredibly important work that we need to be doing to make sure, especially when it comes to the rules that have been put in place with regards to RCEP, that the integration that those rules will lead to in the Indo-Pacific region continues to grow and Australia and Vietnam are going to play a key role in that. And then there's the Australia ASEAN FTA, which is in place, but we have to make sure that that framework continues to grow the economic relationship, not only between Australia and Vietnam, but also between Australia and ASEAN more generally. And then there's other important work that we're doing. At the moment, we have the United States under the Biden administration looking at their engagement in the Indo-Pacific region. And they want to enhance their economic engagement in the Indo-Pacific region. And Australia and Vietnam and other key partners are going to play a key role in the shape of that US economic engagement as well. And then there's also the challenges we face with a more assertive China and how we deal with that and likewise how Australia and Vietnam work together in the region in making sure that those rules that have been in place since the Second World War, which has enabled all countries in the Indo-Pacific to, to continue to grow, to continue to prosper, that those rules stay in place and are enhanced in a way that's in the interests of all countries of the Indo-Pacific. This is probably the most important task that all of us face going forward. And the fact that Australia and Vietnam are so like-minded in recognising that and understand the importance of those rules and the importance of those rules to ensuring that the Vietnamese people and the Australian people and all people in the region can continue to grow, can continue to flourish, that we can continue to provide the incomes to our communities, the way of life to our communities, the employment opportunities to our communities, so that our region continues to flourish. It is the economic powerhouse of the world, the Indo-Pacific, and we want to make sure that it continues to be so. 
and continues to be so in a way where all countries benefit from it. So it's absolutely terrific to be here for the launch of the Policy Institute. It's got incredibly important work to do. It can put the policies in place that can ensure that not only our bilateral relationship continues to flourish, but as importantly, how we work together regionally to ensure our region continues to prosper is absolutely paramount as well. So to everyone involved, it's been an absolute pleasure to come along this afternoon. I look forward to playing my part for the future of the relationship. And I'll end on this point. I will never ever forget the warmth of the welcome that I got when I visited Vietnam last year during the pandemic. That's something that will stay with me for the rest of my life and I'll be eternally grateful for. So I believe because of the warmth of that welcome, I owe a debt of gratitude to make sure that I do my bit to continue to enhance the bilateral relationship between our two countries. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Minister, for your um, extremely warm comments um, and your very insightful comments. I appreciate as well the sporting references. I won't be joining in any of that today. Um, but I do hope that many of people watching today did watch the recent Australia-Vietnam soccer match. Um, we are now entering the panel discussion for today's event. We have invited Australia-Vietnam business champions who are industry leaders that were appointed by both countries to provide that link back into the business community to support the economic engagement strategy. I'm delighted to introduce Emeritus Professor Martin Bean, one of the 2022 Australia-Vietnam business champions who will be moderating the discussion. Martin is the former Vice Chancellor of RMIT University. He's a friend of many today. His name has already been banded around quite a bit. And he is the CEO of the Bean Centre, an organisation that aims to partner with visionary education experts, technology companies and future thinking education providers to create a future that works. Welcome, Professor Martin, and over to you. Thank you, Diane, for that very kind introduction. It's uh, it's great to see everybody here today. Uh, Minister, Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, um, thank you for being here and thank you for all your support in this wonderful endeavour. And what a fabulous event this is today and a milestone in the Australia-Vietnam relationship, the launch of the inaugural Policy Institute in Australia dedicated to our relationship with Vietnam. And let me just add my personal congratulations to all involved for getting us to this point today. The Australia-Vietnam relationship, as you've already heard, is quite frankly at an all-time high. Late last year, we saw the launch of the Australia-Vietnam Enhanced Economic Engagement Strategy by both governments. And this ambitious strategy sets out a roadmap to double two-way trade and investment um, to become top 10 trading partners. And the purpose of our panel session today is a short deep dive into, the, into this new strategy around the key question of why. Why increased economic and strategic engagement between Australia and Vietnam is so important and why is it so important right now? The strategy outlines both the Australia Vietnam Business Champion Initiative that uh, Louise and I are a part of, along with our colleagues in, in Vietnam and Rob here in Australia, and the Australia Vietnam Policy Institute key initiatives. And you, you're hearing a lot about that today at the launch. And I'm enormously proud to be one of the inaugural Australia Vietnam uh, champions, as you heard from Diane, and, and to be joined by um, one of my business champions today, Louise Ad Adams, fellow Australia Vietnam business champion and COO of Oricon. Good to have you here, Louise. Lovely to see you on my screen. But sadly, Hong Kong Trung um, is having some technical issues today, being able to hook up into this team. So I'm going to be watching my screen here today and fingers crossed um, we will um, have him join us uh, as one of our fellow business champions um, uh, representing uh, and supporting the efforts um, in uh, Vietnam. And so I'll, I'll let you know if and when he joins. And we're also lucky on today's panel uh, to hear insights from such esteemed business leaders um, from 
Australia and Vietnam. And I can't wait to hear what you've got to say. And in addition, we're lucky to be joined for today's panel discussion by Richard Maud. Lovely to see you, Richard. Good to see you again. Executive, Hi, lovely to see you. Executive Director of Policy at Asia Society Australia, one of the founding partners of the Institute and, and a very good friend of the Institute uh, and also RMIT. So it's wonderful to have you with us here today, um, Richard. And, and folks, time permitting, we hope to allow for a couple of audience questions at the end. So please submit your questions via the Q&A box on the right hand side of your screen and I'll make sure that I get to those um, if time permits. So let's get started. And I'm coming to you first, Louise. Now, Louise, you uh, head the operations of Oricon, a leading design engineering and advisory company, which has been named Australasia's most innovative professional services company. And I know Oricon has deep interests in Vietnam and, and among your many achievements has been to help bring the Vincom landmark 81 in Ho Chi Minh City to life. And for those people that don't know about this project, it's actually Southeast Asia's tallest skyscraper. And I'm sure, Louise, there are many stories to be told of what that project is like to pull off. And I know, Louise, amongst your many career achievements, you have a personal focus and dedication to supporting women in leadership. So, Louise, the new economic strategy acknowledges the importance of the service sectors for both women's economic empowerment and enhanced economic development. What, what do you see as the opportunities for Australian industry to explore as part of this objective? Yeah, thanks, Martin. And it's wonderful to join you here today for this event. Um, it's very exciting to see the launch here. As you say, I do have a particular passion for increasing women's participation in STEM and in leadership. And uh, I think this is an area where both countries have huge growth opportunities. Um, and if we look at the deep connections we have, I think there's a, a lot of uh, potential focus areas within the context of this agenda that we can use to focus in on this. Uh, you know, some examples across the education sector, I think we can work together to create um, more pathways for women to gain uh, necessary qualifications if I focus in on my passion being STEM, science, technology and engineering. And you talked a little bit earlier about uh, our organisation, Oricon, being, uh, having won awards around innovation. I think it's particularly important when you look at uh, some of the challenges that we're facing in the world today, um, really honing in on these skills and getting far more women involved in this area. I think we can also work together to understand the complementary barriers that exist to getting women into these fields in both countries and also into leadership, whether these barriers be social constructs or cultural factors that push women down other pathways. It could be lack of access to opportunity or visible pathways, or it could even be more practical barriers like gender wage gaps or similar other nuances. We know there's going to be similarities between the two countries and our experiences in this regard, and undoubtedly we can work together to gain progress progress in breaking down some of those barriers. We can also use our relationship to provide visible role models to young women thinking of entering male dominated se sectors such as STEM. And I'm really looking forward to at some point this year visiting Vietnam. And I have also already had conversations with some entities there around perhaps getting in front of some of the um, females that they have studying engineering in particular in the universities to talk to them about the career pathway and what there is for them. I think this issue is front of mind for both the public and private sector in both Vietnam and Australia. And there's many opportunities for us to cross pollinate ideas between the two countries. And if we think about uh, institutions like the University uh, RMIT and an organisation like Oricon, both with considerable scale, presence and commitment in Vietnam, there's going to be lots of good ideas and lessons learned that we can share with our Vietnamese equivalents and also vice versa, receive them back. Um, if we think about uh, the particular importance in Vietnam around Industry 4.0, I get quite excited about that as I think it provides a unique framing opportunity within this remit to attract more female participation. It's ultimately about facing up to some of those worlds, those complex issues that I was talking about before and using science, technology and engineering to solve them. And whilst when we think about that, it's often associated very much with that, how we exploit high tech and big data. It is at its 
very heart, very purpose driven and having a career that it's uh, very purpose driven is becoming more and more important for younger generations in general. But research also shows that it's typically a major career driver for women. So I'm particularly passionate. I'm excited about being involved. I'm excited about being a business champion. But Martin, I'd say there's no shortage of opportunities within the remit and the aspiration we collectively have for us to take this opportunity and to absolutely support women's economic development within it. Yeah, oh, thank you so much, Louise. And one of the things that you and I are so excited about and so passionate about is the the, the reciprocal nature of that mentoring of those fantastic ideas, the ability to support and grow together in those relationships. And there is something really quite special that I've observed when when you open up those lines of mutual understanding and support between the two nations and its people. So thank you very much, Louise. So Richard, I'm coming to you now. Now, for those that don't know you as well as I do, uh, you're a former senior Australian government official. It's probably going to date you a little bit uh, like it does me, Richard, with 30 years experience in foreign policy and national security. Um, and I'm sure you've got some wonderful, insightful comments around the broader strategic issues of the region and the importance particularly of the Australia-Vietnam relationship um, right now. So, so Richard, um, the new strategy sets out a vision for Australia and Vietnam to double two-way investment. And, and obviously investment, we often think of in monetary terms, but actually to achieve that goal, there's an incredible about, amount of bilateral trust and collaboration that has to go on to get there. So does this new economic ambition create the need for a more comprehensive bilateral strategic partnership between the two countries from your, your perspective and experience? Yeah, thanks very much, Martin. Well, it was very interesting to hear Ambassador Tan on this very question. Uh, so the current trajectory of the relationship suggests that we are indeed headed towards uh, what um, governments and foreign policy wonks like me would call a comprehensive strategic partnership at some point in the not too distant future. Indeed, he he said, uh, as you heard, that he'd talked to Maurice Payne about this and uh, possibly as early as next year, which by the way is the, the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. And I suppose just by way of background for those who may not be aware, many countries in the region, including Australia, do tend to sort and rank their relationships with a, a largely common set of hierarchical labels. So Australia's relationship was designated by both countries as a strategic partnership uh, back in 2018 on the occasion of the 45th anniversary of diplomatic relations. And that was a step up from a, a comprehensive partnership um, so, you know, at one level that's diplomatic speak and you might say, well, what's in a name? But it, and it's also true that, you know, designation doesn't always protect a, protect a relationship as we've discovered with China. But I do think it's significant because uh, when you talk about a relationship and describe it in this way, it is an indication of significant momentum in the relationship. It is an indication, as you said, of um, a high degree of trust uh, in a relationship. It sends a signal uh, to uh, businesses and interested communities in both countries about how Vietnam and Australia see the relationship um, and its future. And it also, of course, sends a signal to the region, to the broader Indo-Pacific, about the health of uh, the Vietnam-Australia relationship. But also, if you know, if we do do it, um, often when governments start talking about elevating the status, the formal status of a relationship in this way, they're also interested in using that occasion to build even more substance into it. So if Australia and Vietnam do get to that point where uh, the Prime Ministers agree and announce that the relationship would be formally ungraded, upgraded, I think you could be pretty confident that the, the foreign ministries, the economic ministries in both countries would be looking at developing a, a new plan of action that would uh, punch even more substance into the bilateral relationship. I think from a Canberra perspective, uh, I'm sure that the government would want to get there. Uh, the 50th 
anniversary hangs out there as a, a tantalising opportunity. So, so let's see. But whether or not we do get there, we shouldn't um, we shouldn't uh, use uh, we shouldn't lose sight of the tremendous progress that's already been made uh, that Ambassador Tian talked about, and also the quite remarkable convergence of interest now and outlook between Australia and Vietnam that we see. Oh, thank you very, very much. Um, Richard, Louise, I'm going to come back to you if I, I can for a moment, sort of a, a question um, without notice because we've got a bit more time and I would encourage people to put any questions that you've got into the, the chat box if you, you've got them. But Louise, as your teams have um, engaged in Vietnam um, as sort of uh, from Australians working on an incredible project in Vietnam. What's been some of the feedback that you've had from them about the experience with working with colleagues in, in Vietnam? How, how would you sum up some of the, the, the feedback you've been getting? Yeah, look, the feedback's always been really positive and we've sort of really invested heavily in creating a really strong uh, relationship between our Australian uh, teams and our Vietnamese team in the last few years. And I think the, some of the consistent themes that we get, um, similar to what Diane said in the, uh, in the introduction, we always get this consistent theme that there is this deeply um, embedded cultural alignment between Australia and Vietnam that can only come from the fact that we've been, um, you know, that the, the two countries have been working so closely for the five decades as, as uh, was alluded to in the introductory comments. Um, but the next thing that comes out and it comes out again and again and again is around the, um, the thirst that comes from our Vietnamese team for uh, digital skills and really um, you know, a, an interest in upskilling in those digital skills and a desire to keep pushing the boundaries on how we embed those digital skills into what we do. And that does play a huge role in supporting the delivery of our projects, both in Vietnam, but also the delivery of some of the projects we do in Australia. By our business covers the APAC region. We have uh, offices throughout Australia, New Zealand, and um, in multiple locations throughout Asia. And I could confidently say that our Vietnamese teams by far lead our organisation in those digital skills. Um, and I think that this, and, and Martin, we've talked about this also, the, the digital ambitions that come through the collaborative opportunities that we have around those um, digital skills that we know we're going to need uh, to to front up to some of those industry 4.0 opportunities. Um, given the footprint of an organisation like RMIT, there's huge op education opportunities, but also huge business opportunities to build off of that. But I would say that is the one consistent piece of feedback that I get back from about our Vietnamese uh, team. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear you say that as a professor of digital education. It means I'll be busy in the relationship for a while, which is very good. R Richard, I've got a question that's come in from the group. So obviously this um, uh, sort of economic agreement that we've entered into covers a wide range of priority sectors between the two nations. Now, Louise has sort of touched on digital as being one of the areas that we really need to collaborate on. But the, the, what they'd like to know from you is what do you see as the number one sector that business should target as we think about collaborating with colleagues in, uh, in Vietnam uh, from your perspective, Richard? Yeah, thanks, Martin, and thank you uh, for for the question. Look, I think it is actually hard to point to one single sector because the story here is of a country in Vietnam that is forecast to return this year. Uh, the IMF thinks to growth of about six point six percent. That's a that's quite remarkable bounce mm -hmm. back from last year's um, COVID-induced recession and brings Vietnam back to its historic growth rates that we've seen for a good decade or more. Uh, we see uh, a growing consumer class in Vietnam. We see Vietnam increasingly integrated into the region's supply chains. So there, there are actually multiple opportunities here for Australia. Um, you know, traditionally, um, if if you look at the trade relationship, there are a couple of really big elements to it. Iron ore, for example, which is obviously a critical input into any country's industrialization. So that will continue. Agriculture is a really big part of our trade. And if you think about that growing consumer class, that record of economic growth, 
then that's going to be a significant part. The, the economic plan of action uh, has quite a strong focus on the services sector. Uh, digital obviously is a big part of that. Um, you mentioned yourself, Martin, education. It's quite a similar story right across Southeast Asia. Uh, where Southeast Asian countries are looking for help to build their human capital, particularly as part of a COVID recovery plan. So that's about universities, but it's also about TVET, you know, which is a, a really a big sector. There are other uh, areas of services that Australian companies have started uh, to show an interest in, uh, like logistics, uh, for example. Um, if, if Robin Moody, our ambassador, was here with you, she talked to you about um, the uptick in interest that she's seeing uh, from uh, small and medium sized enterprises in Australia. So it's not just the really big players who are part of this story. And I think uh, the, the, the economic plan uh, actually is an excellent set of um, objectives and it takes you through where not just Australia, but Australia and Vietnam see this broad ranging economic opportunity uh, that works for both countries. Um, for, for Vietnam, obviously it's interested in development partners. Obviously it wants all the help it can get in charting a, a path to recovery uh, from COVID and to resume that uh, growth rate. And for Australia, uh, the minister, Minister Tian touched on this you know, trade diversification has become a hugely important part of Australia's trade agenda because of the economic actions that China has taken for against us. So markets like Vietnam, which are important in their own right, are becoming even more important. And there is definitely plenty of room uh, to grow. The trade relationship has been growing uh, at above 8% on average over the past five years. But it's still, Vietnam's still only our 13th largest um, export market when you combine goods and services and still only about 1.8% of our total goods and services exports. So there, there is lots of room to, lots work of toward, opportunity. to work towards those twin targets that we've been talking about. No, look, thank, thank you so much, Richard. And sadly, we're out of time for this short panel session. So I've, I've got to draw it to a close. But the good news is the Policy Institute is going to have these as a series of rolling conversations between our nations, between our industry leaders, between our, our governments. And we're going to be welcoming all of you to participate. So thanks for being with us today, everybody. Thank you for your questions. I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of them. They just started rolling in furiously as I was wrapping up. I look forward to the activities in the weeks, months and years ahead. And I'm going to hand back to you now, Diane. Thank you very much uh, to Richard and Louise. Thank you so much for uh, excellent moderation, Martin. Thank you for the panel members for your insights. Uh, Louise, I thought um, fantastic to get your practical experience um, and also you highlighting the uh, digital economy as a key opportunity for the countries to collaborate. Um, Richard, uh, thank you for also setting some of the strategic context for the wider audience. Um, certainly from a agricultural perspective, I can uh, very, I'm very pleased to be able to say that I know in the last couple of days, it was formally announced that Australian nectarines and peaches have uh, been granted market access to Vietnam, which is a very exciting achievement for Australian horticulture. Um, now, to wrap up, I would like to introduce you to another AVPI founding partner, Mr. Lee Howard, CEO of AsiaLink. Lee has over two decades of experience representing Australian businesses across Asia, across the corporate, government, startup and for-purpose sectors. He was previously Deputy Commissioner to Southeast Asia for the State Government of Victoria and is a Foundation Board Member of Ozcham ASEAN, the peak body for all officially registered Australian Chambers and Business Councils in Southeast Asia. A very warm welcome to Mr Lee Howard. Uh, thank you, Diane, and hello, everyone. Uh, it's uh, great to be with you. I'm going to take just a, a few minutes to wrap up today's proceedings um, and give a preview of where to from here. Uh, let me start by thanking uh, our esteemed panellists. Uh, we heard from Louise and Richard, unfortunately didn't hear from Hong, uh, but thank you for such an insightful conversation on the continued activation of the Australia-Vietnam economic strategy 
And thank you to Professor Martin Bean for facilitating this conversation and bringing to light uh, the real momentum um, and sense of uh, continued growth in the relationship between Australia and Vietnam in just a, a very short period of time that you had. Uh, a deep and special thanks to Minister Tian for his remarks uh, and his continuing support of the Australia-Vietnam bilateral relationship and of the AVPI in particular. Uh, thanks also to their excellencies, Ms Robert Moody, Mr Nguyen Tat Tan and Professor Alec Cameron for your very, very positive remarks. Thank you. Uh, just a quick reminder for everyone watching that a recording of today's proceedings will be shared via email next week and made available on the AVPI website. AsiaLink has a very uh, proud and long track record of increasing Australia's engagement with Asia. We are therefore delighted to be one of the founding partners of the AVPI, along with RMIT, Asia Society and the Australia-Vietnam Leadership Dialogue. It is wonderful to be working with such a strong group of partners who are passionate about Australia's relationship with Vietnam and can help to set a unified direction for ongoing engagement. It's also been fantastic to see the huge interest in the AVPI to date and the fast growth of partners across a range of industry sectors. For organisations who might be watching today, I would encourage you to get involved. There are opportunities to become knowledge partners and join the growing AVPI network. Please visit the AVPI website after today's session to learn even more about knowledge partner opportunities, our consortia approach and our upcoming events. In particular, in 2022, the AVPI founding partners will be hosting a series of roundtable discussions that will deep dive into key areas in the bilateral relationship. In May, AsiaLink will host the first roundtable discussion on Vietnam's digital economy and opportunities in the e-commerce and fintech sectors. In July, the AVLD will host a roundtable on sustainable technology. And later this year, Asia Society and RMIT will host roundtables on topics such as Industry 4.0 and cybersecurity. Finally, to our audience members watching today, thank you for joining us for the launch of the Australia Vietnam Policy Institute, and we look forward to seeing you at future events. Diane, back to you. Thank you so much, Lee, for your um, closing up and wrap up. Um, that marks the end of today's launch event for the Australian Vietnam Policy Institute. As Lee mentioned, uh, if you'd like to learn more, please visit the website at avpi.org.au follow the socials and get connected to the network. Um, the next event series by AVPI led by AsiaLink on the digital economy, e-commerce and fintech sounds great. So please um, join us for that. Thank you to absolutely everyone involved in today's launch. It has been such a pleasure to host you. I hope that everyone has a lovely rest of the day. Goodbye for now. Thank you and come on.